Let's talk about chapter 22 generics today. And so we're going to be talking about generic methods and generic classes and what they are and when you'd want to use them. So before we get into generic methods, let's talk about overloaded methods. So overloaded methods are very similar to generic methods. So let's go over generic or uh, overloaded methods that we've already learned about before. So here you'll notice we've got three different types of arrays and we're going to want to be able to pass these different types of arrays into an array or into a method just to be able to display those different types of arrays. So you can see we've got three overloaded methods here, all which just take in those different types of arrays. So if we scroll down here, you can see these three different display array methods and each one inside is doing pretty much the exact same thing. The only difference you'll notice here is that this one has an integer, this one has a double, and this one has a char. But as far as their functionality goes, they are exactly the same. It's just the type that is different. So now imagine you had to do this for, again, every single type. Let's say you, know, you had to do this for 20 different types. You had 20 different methods just to be able to get this method to be overloaded. Well, wouldn't it be nice if you could just write this method one time and then have the user tell you what the actual type is of this array that they're passing in or the type of whatever variable they're passing in. Well that's where generic methods come in. So let's take a look at how you code a generic method. So here we have that exact same program. So again we have three arrays of different types. We have this display array method but now you'll notice we only have one display array method. Now generic syntax in C Sharp is a little bit confusing at first but it's not too bad after you use it a few times. So you'll notice it looks exactly like a normal method, except the first thing we see here is this open bracket T and then you know the closing bracket or greater than sign here. And then within our parentheses, we can see that we're just passing in the input array here, but we're saying T and then array symbols. So now this T itself can be anything you want. This could be ABC, for instance. If I wanted to, I could change it to ABC, but I have to change this to ABC and this to ABC. So you can name that anything you want. This is just saying, hey, I want the user to pass in a type. However, you generally leave it as T for type. That just That's just sort of a standard that Microsoft has come up with, which makes sense, T for type. So you want to leave this alone as, as T here. And so by using this syntax, by saying, hey, user, I'm going to have you pass in the type right here, then I'm going to go ahead and just use that type everywhere within here. I can just replace. So this would just be, instead of int element, now I can just say T. So they can pass into me anything I want. Rather than the type of array, I can just say T array and handles all of these just fine. So what you'll notice now when I come up here and I say display array, anytime you see a method that has these little brackets on the end here, the less than and greater than sign, you know you're dealing with generics. And then so I can just say display array and then I can pass in the array. So the question you may be having is that I'm not passing in any types here you'll notice that. I'm just passing in the array. I haven't passed in the type also. And that's just fine because C-sharp will actually figure out the type for you. So if it, you had just, again, we happen to have done an array, but if we were just passing in an integer, we could have said integer. We didn't have to actually, could have just passed in an integer. We don't have to actually do it hard-coded. But what we can do, for instance, if let's do the equivalent of this first line here, but let's write it completely out. So here I would actually say, hey, I'm going to actually pass in an integer type, and then here is my array that I'm passing in. So this line and this line are equivalent. However, this is optional because it can figure out the type based on the variable type that you pass in. So generally speaking, this is the way that you would write. It, it, again, if you're doing the exact same, if your overloaded methods are doing the same thing, the only thing that's different is the type, you would use generics. Where you'd use method overloading is if the syntax, if something in here is, you have to process it different based on you know your different overloads. But if just the type is different but you're doing the same thing, then you'd use a generic method. 
So now, we haven't really learned a lot about classes yet. We're going to go over that in, in Chapter 10. However, we have kind of looked at the basics of classes and how you create them. And so this is also related to generic methods, so I wanted to cover it here, and that's generic classes. And so it's the exact same thing, where imagine you had a stack class. And so a stack is just kind of like an array where you can keep piling things on to the top of the stack. So you would keep adding integers to the top of your stack, and then you could pop the top element off. Well, if you were going to write a stack class for integers, that means you'd have to have an integer stack class that only dealt with integers, where you could add and remove integers from your stack. And if you wanted a double, then you'd have to create a double stack class where you could pass in doubles, add and remove doubles. So you're noticing, just like generic methods, the only difference in these classes is the type that you're passing in. And so that's where generic classes come in, where you say, okay, I've got my class, and the only difference is, is now you say, okay, user, I want you to tell me what type of class, so what, you know, what type am I going to be using throughout my class? So I can pass in integer. And everywhere you see t, just replace t with int or replace it with double. And so if you saw a private integer array, right, that makes that's a lot more readable. And that's all you're doing when it says t here. You're just saying, hey, the user passed in int, so just replace everywhere where I see t with int. So you can see I'm creating a new integer array here, or I'm creating a new double array. And so everywhere where it needed to push and pop off you know, these elements, you can see the pop is returning that value. So here I'm returning an integer, or I'm returning a double. And this is where you can use generic classes. So now here is how you would actually use that generic stack class. And so I've got these two arrays of ones of double and ones of type int. And so now when I declare my stack classes, you'll notice that I'm passing in the types for these classes. And then so when I declare each of these, I declare a new stack of type double, a new stack of type integer. And now I can just use these in order to be able to add and remove values from them. But when I wrote the code, I only had to create one class. I didn't have to create a double stack class and an integer stack class. But now the user who's using my class can pass in whatever type they want to use it to hold those types of data.